S corporation tax general concepts, problem nine. On January 1st, year one, Radish, an individual, paid $15,000 for 5% of the stock in Root Corp and S Corporation. In November year one, he loaned $8,000 to Root Corp in return for a promissory note. Root Corp generated a $600,000 operating loss in year one. Root Corp generated $220,000 ordinary business income in year two. In year three, Root Corp repaid its $8,000 debt to Radish before he restored any basis in the debt. How much gain or loss, if any, will Radish recognize on the debt repayment in year three? All right, so this problem isn't too bad. I know that these S corporation loan basis or stock basis problems can be very challenging. The good news is that this one, it's just asking one question, how much gain or loss, if any, will Radish recognize once the debt repayment is made in year three? The problem though, and that's where students get a little nervous is that we've got year one to worry about, we've got year two to worry about, we've got a lot of stuff, okay? So we do have, let's just read through again, we've got Radish individual pays 15000 for 5% of the stock of an S corporation. So again, note first, it's an S corporation, not a C corporation, not a partnership, S corporation. As you all know from the other problems and what we've been talking about, when you have S corporations, you're not able to consider liabilities in the basis of the stock. You are able to consider the personal loans to S corporations as a separate loan basis item. So at the beginning, when we have our initial basis, so we're going to do on the left side is we're going to look at the allocation of items. On the right side, we're going to look at basis. So the basis initially, when formed, right, we've got stock, and loan amounts so we have to keep together but separate so we've got stock basis so initial initially paid fifteen thousand dollars so right there we got fifteen thousand fifteen thousand dollars loan loaned eight thousand dollars so boom right there we're working going to work so in year one in year one we're told that there is a six hundred thousand dollar operating loss and just like a lot of businesses in the first year, there is a loss because you purchase a lot of things and you've got a lot of things to learn, learning curve. So we have a $600,000 operating loss and Radish owns 5%, easy calculation, 600,000 times 5%, that's going to be a $30,000 loss. So the question becomes, can we use all $30,000? And the answer is no, because 15,000 plus 8,000 equals 23,000. That's not enough. So we are able to do $23,000 of the loss in year one. Okay. Loss in year one. And the remaining or the difference between these numbers, the $7,000 loss. Let me write that a little bit better, be a little bit more legible. The $7,000 loss carries over to year two carries over a year two, okay? And that brings our basis at the end of year one, because we have our loss amount, we get to take the full portion, 23,000, but not the 30. So at the end of year one, brings our loss amount, or brings our basis down to zero because we subtract away both numbers, 15 and eight to get us down to zero. So that is year one. That's our year one analysis. So then we look at year two. So year two, We've got $220,000 of ordinary business income. So $220,000 of ordinary business income. Multiply that by 5%. That's going to be $11,000. Now, remember the way this works. You do ordering first. Okay. So um, let me erase this line. I know I put a line there, but actually I don't like that line anymore because I want to continue with this list. We can do that for, for year two. Um, over here on the left side with the allocation of items of income, okay, and the carryover loss items. But year two, we start off income in year two. And remember, the rule is when you lower for loss, you first reduce from the stock and the second you reduce from the loan. When you're increasing the income, you first increase the loan to the face amount. So if we're at zero and we need to go to the face amount, which is 8,000, we, and we have 11,000, we go, we increase it up to the face amount of 8,000, and then the remaining 3,000 increases our stock amount. Okay, like that. Like that. 
So that brings our basis up to 3,000 and 8,000 respectively in that order. And then we have a $7,000 carryover. We have a $7,000 carryover. And that carryover can be used. We can offset $11,000 down to 4,000 for purposes of how Radish reports. So Radish's year two income is only $4,000, it's not the 11,000. And then we also need to subtract away the loss using our ordering rules, okay? And we have our loss, if I put loss here, plus income. Remember first, you go, you reduce the loss from the, from the stock basis down to zero. So that means we do 3,000 because we can only bring it down to zero, we can't go further. And then we have 7,000, right? is the amount of the loss, right? The $7,000 loss minus 3,000 we just used, we have 4,000 loss to bring, to take away from this side, to take away from the loan side, that brings our loan basis down to $4,000. So the adjusted basis at the end of year two is $4,000. So that's the consequences for year one, year two. And by the way, I know I went uh, very quickly through that um, because we talked about two problems already that basically went through those consequences. So please see those as the previous problems. So now we get to the last part of the question. We had to do all that because we're told in year three, Root Corp repaid its $8,000 debt to Radish before he restored any basis in the debt. So it's repaying off that amount of the debt. So the question is, if you're paying off an $8,000 debt, then um, the Root Corp did, the idea here is you have to think about it as a sale or exchange event. So amount realized, which is going to be $8,000 minus your adjusted basis, and I'll explain why we're doing this in a moment, is $4,000. This is a $4,000 gain. So what I'm saying here is there are told in the problems that basically the corporation's paying back what it owes. And when if the corporation pays back all $8,000 that it, that it owes and you have a $4,000 basis, then the idea is that you take the amount you're going to receive, you subtract away the basis you've been, you've been um, calculating, which is this number right here, and the difference is going to be a gain. This is a gain on the transaction. And that's also why I tell you that there was no basis restored in year three before um, Radish restored any basis in year three. So that means it stays at $4,000. Okay, that means nothing changed with that number. So that means that we have a $4,000 gain at the end of year three. How much gain or loss, if any, will Radish recognize on the debt repayment in year three? Okay, $4,000. And it's going to be, by the way, a capital gain. I care more about you determining the right amounts than determining it's a capital gain. But so the $4,000 is the important part. Now, again, so we had to go through all year one, year two, just so we get to the last number for year three, just to solve that one question, which is kind of annoying because, yeah, you've got to go through all that. But once you go through those previous problems, year one and two is just review from previous problems. Year three, I'm just bringing in another element. Again, what's going on is that, hey, the corporation that you've loaned money to, that Radish loaned money to, they're paying you back what they owe. And if they're giving you a certain amount, let's say they give you $8,000, then you take the basis that you have in the note, which is 4,000, and you basically say, okay, we're getting 8,000. We have a basis of 4,000. We basically take the difference. That's the gain. So if our basis here was 8,000, right? Because we didn't, let's say we didn't reduce the basis ever, then we'd have no, no gain. Because the idea is that it's just, you, you lent money and they're repaying you the money that you, that you lent. So there'd be no gain. But here you reduce the basis to 4,000. So you have a $4,000 gain. And that's the amount of gain in this problem. It's a capital gain, but the more important thing is that it's a $4,000 calculated gain.